is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I'm just going to mention it now in case in the future, like last week, Samantha wasn't here, uh, our IT person, for um, uh, putting the video online. And so, so the next work day that she was here, it got done. So if that should happen in the future, um, that's why. Uh, she's here today, so I'm sure it will be on later today. Okay, uh, anything with the agenda, guys? Any changes? Okay, can I get a motion? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. How about the minutes and the claims? Um, I, for claims, I have like just two questions. I, I mean, I'm not really questioning. It's just for my knowledge. Um, what is National change of address, does that have to do with voting? It's like on the first page. Um, I don't have to see it. Shoot, I don't have it. It was like $2,000. Secretary, yeah, Secretary of State, $2,000, I suppose. Uh, that's 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 voters. Voters, yeah. and Some then, maintenance. And what's a watch guard video? That was page three, 4000 I did catch that one. Yeah, I wondered about it. It's curious. That's, what was that one? It's called. It's page three. The watch guard video. That's the sheriff. The sheriff. That's the sheriff. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, I was just curious on those, so I didn't have any concerns. So moved to approve. And I shall second that. Okay. With no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And minute and claims are. Approved. County general uh, general discussion. Uh, county attorney Mark, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, you got anything for us today? The only thing I have is for number seven. Um, just to kind of fill you in a little bit, um, the Pitson family and Adam and have been working really hard and I've been handling the legal side of it uh, to, to purchase a property over by Stacyville. I think Adam said now he's got a grant. Just a reminder that before we could borrow money that we do have to set that for public hearing and post, post notice in the paper. So I mean you can discuss it today but we would still have to publish notice and Adam said, yeah, we're, we're months away from that, but I just wanted you to be aware once again that you can't borrow money without having a public hearing. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, all I have on that. that's good. I see they changed the agenda to say consideration instead of approval, so we're on target there. Bard, would that be something that after the county attorney is done with this discussion that we maybe jump right into seven right away? Would we sure could name when name. it's done. That'd be all right. Since Adam's all right here. with you. So why don't we do that? That would be fine if we don't mind, Gail. Are yeah. you in a hurry? No. Okay. Do you have anything else for us, Mark? No, but I'll stay on the line while Adam's discussing this. That'd be a good idea. Yes. Okay, Adam. Ready? <clears throat> By the way, this is entitled Consideration of Resolution to Enter into a Loan for Sijonic Acres Acquisition yes. by Stacyville. Sijonic, there's three Sijonic. brothers. Okay. So that's the name there, anyways. They came to us this fall wanting to sell their entire farm to us. They wanted to remain in CRP and be protected permanently. Um, so we're scrambling to try to figure out a way to do that. The total property is 212 acres, and the price at the top there, $996,000. Um, so a big, big acquisition for us. Um, let the boards very interested.
guys did. We're obviously working on it. So, in order to get the Habitat Stamp Grant, which you see there in the funding plan, would be a about a third of the project. Um, we have to have a plan to ensure that we're going to cover the rest of the grant. Now or the rest of the property. So in other words, they've given money to counties before and then had the project default because they weren't able to come up with the rest of the funds. So if we don't show that we're going to be serious about this project, um, we'll never get that grant application. So I kind of broke down how it would work out. Um, our plan is to get that grant and then seek out other funds as well. We usually hit you know, the FEMC grants, your smaller ones here in town, and then seek funding from Pheasants Forever, Ducks Unlimited, Whitetails Forever, all those groups. And that amount generally can come in around $100,000. So potentially the most we can raise would be that $400,000 mark. Um, the virus has played a role in that with some of those banquets being canceled. I know Mitchell County Ducks Banquet was canceled this year. Some of our neighboring counties, um, Pheasants Forever, Banquets were, were canceled, and so that kind of moves the ball back on that, on that money coming in. It's not that they won't eventually do it, it's just that right now it's kind of a, a bad time for that. So we don't have that money ahead of time like we normally do. Normally I'd come to you and say, I have 100000 I need this much. That's just not the case right now because of the way things are. So. Um, We'll still continue to seek those funds. There's no deadline on those coming in, but uh, that's where we're at right now. So if you read what I proposed there on the third bullet would be to approve entering a loan agreement to cover the, the purchase price only upon award of the Habitat Stamp Grant. I mean, Mark might have some other wording here. Um, and after all other contributions have been made in order to fulfill the purchase agreement. So we have a purchase agreement with Pittsons for a year. Um, and so that would just mean that we would we would loan whatever else uh, the grants are covered only if we get the grants to begin with. Mm -hmm. So if I'm successful in getting this Habitat Stamp Grant for 300000 it says that you guys would loan to cover the rest of the purchase agreement. Now, how that loan would be paid back would be through CRP. It's not like we're coming in and asking to drop into the general fund or something like that. We'd have to go out for the loan, and then we'd cover that with CRP payments. Currently, those are at 48000 per year. If we had no other money come in and had to borrow 700000 that would still be sustainable for a 20-year 20, 20 loan at 2%. Um, and this project's eligible for different programs. The State Revolving Loan Fund, you can borrow for water quality projects at 2%. Um, we could look at local banks, they've been right around 2%. But again, this is probably a few months out before we would actually borrow it. The grant gets scored in July, it's due this week, then they score it in July. We get funded, then we can start thinking about it. Typically, you have to go through two rounds of the grant, which the next round is in November. So. But again, to be able to apply, I just have to have some statement of support from the board that if we get the grant, you guys will allow the conservation board to take out a loan to pay the rest of the property. I have one question, Adam. Mm -hmm. On the, the CRP payments, how many years are we in on there? What, what, what is their... Their current contract's a 10-year contract. And how long and has it already been in? They've got four done, so it'd be six more years. Six more years at 48000 um, yep. At the end of that, we would try and re-roll it? Yep, we would try to re-enroll. So there's no guarantee that you'll get the same payment. Obviously, right now, they're down a little bit from that. Um, but typically, in a six-year period, you're going to at least break even on it. So um, if that's not the case, there's other options to pay as well. Um, we could start start going into some of our other revenues. We also get a REAP allocation currently, but it's kind of up in the air. That's like twenty thousand. Um, I guess it's more like thirteen thousand the way the legislature's been funding it. But we can put those monies toward it. Um, we also have loans on other properties right now that are going to be paid off in that time frame. So we could roll the payments that are going towards those onto this one. So. 
the board's pretty confident that uh, just we'll be able to make the payments. Last just, day, uh, so. just roughly at say fifty thousand a year for six years. That's three hundred thousand plus. You'd have your two percent interest. But it is possible that if the land isn't to be able to be re rolled over and put back into CRP, it would be possible that you could use your land acquisition funds to finish it out. Um, whatever funds we have at that time, hard to say what will be in there in six years, but yeah, we don't have a, a chunk of money for land acquisition sitting around. I know you see the trust fund, but that's kind of allocated out. There's Mitchell Dam money, trail money, things like that. But um, potentially we have about $10,000 we can work with on land every year. And that, that basically just covers your appraisals, your surveys, all that stuff to get a project started. So. Um, Last I heard, the was still supposed to be going. Through. Yeah, there should be some money there. If they ever fund the trust fund, there'd be more money available that way but we wouldn't ask for the money if we couldn't figure out a way to pay it back I guess my worst case scenario Steve would be like our capital improvement budget so right now we get maybe 52,000 55,000 a year for capital improvements um, that's like your picnic shelters bathrooms whatever um, you know worst case we put that allocation toward it if we weren't able to get CRP but typically we've never had it where there was no program available mm -hmm. I guess just in my head, just rough thinking at four four hundred thousand plus we're gonna get three hundred close to three hundred thousand out, there'll be a little less than that. So that total would be you know seven hundred thousand. So in the tail end we would still be three hundred thousand short if that if things were to go sour with CRP, I'm hoping that that isn't the case. But um, well, obviously we can't give approval today. But you're probably hoping that we can at least show a positive towards it or a negative. You have to give a motion for me to be able to apply for the grant at all. So I a think motion there has to, say, to be. Yeah. Yeah. I to. thought we couldn't do that though. Can we just make a motion that We're, you can make a motion approval. that if we receive the grant, then you will agree to enter a contract loan later on. Can we do that one? That'd be a question for Mark. Well, that's Mark's Can we do question. that, Mark? I forgot he was still on the line. Yes, you can. Oh, okay. And the question I'm anticipating is, well, what happens if we uh you know, agree to this, and then everything goes fine, and then we publish notice, and um, we don't borrow the money, you know, for some reason. Um, I think Adam explained that they could deal with that. We certainly hope that doesn't happen, but I I'm pretty confident the conversations I've had with uh, Adam that, you know, things are going to go through. We're going to get this done if you guys, you know, will approve this resolution. I, I happen to think so too. Do you guys want to go ahead and, and approve the resolution? Well, one of the things that uh, <clears throat> over the years it always has been mentioned is that uh, any county, any area should have 10% of their land should be in public, public ownership. I think Mitchell County, are we at about one half of 1%? That's probably close, yeah. You know, we don't even come close to... Uh, uh, Interesting. We're way behind Worth County. Well, I used to sit on that Worth County board. That's why we're way behind. <laughs> uh, but no. Uh, well, basically, again, that, uh, you know, we don't even come close to the 1%. And this is a nice... Acquisit, uh, acquisition uh, fits over there by Stacyville by the other park that we're just putting in six hundred and twenty five thousand dollars worth of improvements uh, it uh, uh, I definitely think that uh, uh, again that we ought to be going forward with it so. yeah. 
I, I did too. And, and you had mentioned, you might have mentioned in the email, what were they going to do with this log home? Uh, that will come to us as well. Really? That's included in the price. So it would be a cabin. There's some pictures there yeah. of the property. And then the last page, or one of the last pages, has some of the cabin stuff on there. Yeah, that looks nice. It's a pretty... Pretty nice looking cabin, so there'll be some additional revenue there from that too. It yeah. won't be huge, but a little bit. Would you try to rent it out as uh, uh, per the day or per the week, or would you actually try to just rent it as a uh, uh, permanent uh, for somebody? For I think it'd be per the day or the week, or even a monthly rate. But uh, that's kind of what we've done with the other cabins. The public's responded well to that. It gives everyone an opportunity to enjoy the area that way, so that's kind of the plan with that one. And I take it, Mark, and <clears throat> I think this is an obvious whatever, but I take it you have no problem with... Uh, uh... I, don't, I don't have a problem, and in fact, if you ask me personally from what I've seen in the negotiations and talking to everyone, as a member of the public, not as the county attorney, I would uh, encourage you to sign it. Thank you, Mark. Well, it's, if it goes the way it planned, it will not cost anybody in the county down the road. So, I, I make a motion to move to show support for Adam to go further into this. Is that good enough motion, Mark, to for what you need, or Adam needs? Uh, I don't have the resolution number, but I would just have somebody move to approve resolution number, blah, 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 as set forth by Adam Shirley. Okay, so what is it's not written. Just say so move. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So, so move. Yeah. I make the motion. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any further discussion? Without any, then um, the resolution to enter into this loan is uh, approved. Should be a win win. Should be. Thank you guys very much. And you I'll keep you posted on what happens with the grant. And and just well, keep, our, exciting, actually. keep our fingers crossed that seven years from now we can pop yeah. it back in. Should be okay. The other side of that is, you know, after it's paid, you can still go ahead with the, with the CRP and can work on other projects. So, yes, yeah. it's an asset, really. Well, you know, and it's taken years and years for uh, uh, county conservation boards to start to build some. Um, revenue coming in from, uh, like you say, CRP in that, but uh, after another 15, 20 years with our acquisitions and so on and so forth, some of these things should really start to generate some fairly decent money that uh, the program uh, can be self-sustaining and, sure. and uh, it's just like the revenue from uh, uh, the dam. If uh, we can continue to sell our electricity to uh, Alliant and that, that'll continue to maintain that dam, plus it even should have some additional revenues. Uh, uh, so we're really on the I right... I look for any of this down the road. I mean, we're on the right track of uh, 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 for yeah. the future. At least I feel we're on the right track for the future. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Good I luck, Adam. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you again. We'll see you. Okay, Gail's here from the CRC about the Main to Main Marathon. Thank you. This is Rich and here for discussion. Oh, great. Um, this will be our third annual Main to Main Marathon half and 10K. As you guys know, it goes from Osage to Mitchell to St. Anster and back. Um, this, state, the, this year's date is August 22nd, uh, 
Um, and yes, we are planning to hold it. Uh, we've got a lot of our volunteers lined up and are ready to go. Our runners, um, we get emails daily of, are you having your event? And yes, we are planning to have our event. If needed, we'll have a staggered start time of having marathoners, um, the fastest marathoners go at 6.30, the next fastest 6.33. That way they'd be in smaller groups, but at this time I'm not really concerned. Um, last, so the first year we had 164 runners. The second year we had 193 runners. And I'm hoping to get um, over 200 runners this year as well. Um, so basically why I'm here is again, if we, Rich, if you want to chime in too, if we could get the roads closed similar to what we did last year, it worked out really well. All the runners felt safe, um, and it was easy to drive by and make sure that they were okay. It, it, I think yesterday or last year's event was really want run successfully. Um, working with the city of Osage, they helped a lot with getting the barricades around town, and then St. Ansgar also helped with cones around town. Lance helped with that, and then um, he was also there. Uh, at 3 a.m. to help up set up barricades too. So it's definitely a community involvement event and it totally brings church groups together, running groups together, just whole Mitchell County together to make this event successful and also help support the businesses around town. Um, Rich, do you have anything to say? Do you, do you still want to close approximately the seven hours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. Do you, Rich? People need to, to uh, mute their computers if this is going on. Yeah. Okay, can, can those watching this um, please mute your computers? We're getting a lot of feedback. Thank you. There's one, there's one caller that's muted, so I'm getting Okay, we, we have someone that needs to mute their computer. Can you tell where it's coming? I can tell it doesn't have it. it can we mute it? <laughs> Yes, it is. Um, we, okay, we can't seem to now. mute it on our end. Okay, so can you can you remind me what there? Can you say what the question was again? Because I couldn't hear. Very oh, well. did did you have anything to add uh, to main to main? You know, I think that I think that the road closure worked okay. My biggest issue was was early in the morning when I was putting signs out, just keeping people off the dang road because nobody wanted to abide by the road closure. Um, and then the difficulty was um, maybe in the St. Anthony area, we need to button things up a little tighter because it seemed like what, whatever I did what I could as far as getting more stuff, but we'll probably just need to get more signage out. But a lot of people just used that road regardless of whether it was closed or not. It was really difficult keeping people off. In fact, I know there was a lot of snide comments early on in the morning with closing the road, but it was what it was, and, and the board approved the closure, and it was advertised as being closed. People just didn't want to abide by it, but I think as the, the race went on during the day, I think it got better, so um, we'll do some more, uh, try to get, bring some more barricades to the town, I think, and just kind of block things off, but uh, um, the nice thing is the funds go up a lot faster this year. We've got every one of the post locations marked again, just hopefully we don't get some signs old, so it'll be easier, but do you have any more for Rich Gale? Oh, yeah, no, other things I would just say, I can coordinate with Lance a little bit more to get St. Ant's Girl locked down just a little bit better, if that would help. Uh, um, I think they use one of their traffic control devices. We just probably need to bring some more okay. to help alleviate the side streets coming into town. So I think the biggest thing was people weren't aware that, you know, it, it seemed to me that people weren't aware that Old Mill Road was open to get you around outside of town um, to get around the back way and head west. Um, 
maybe sign the same map. Sneaking in from 420 and then come to work because it was only a, a short jaunt into town. So um, even though we had it barricaded twice, so okay. but we'll just have a, we'll just have to try to improve it if we can. Okay. And I forgot to say this is a letter that we send to all the residents and businesses on the route. We just use you know, Beacon Schneider Corp to figure out who lives where. Um, obviously, I'll update it with the new date here, but it's just a saying that you know you guys are also in there to keep runners safe. The Mitchell County Supervisors along our closing Foothill Avenue, the City of Osage, and St. Andrew will be closing running route to limit car traffic. Just so that you know that your name is in here as well. Um, I, I wonder if on here you can put that old mill. Sure. Outlet. Yeah, I can. Maybe for put it right on there. There's people that live there, yeah. And then, and then, don't forget, Gail, in your first sentence to change mm -hmm. it to the third annual meeting. Yes, for sure. This yeah. is just last year's copy. Sure. Well, yeah. then you might as well make use out of it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the St. Ansgar Enterprise Journal would would be glad to, like you say, if you uh, explain that. Uh, oh, whole sure. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, if they mm -hmm. could uh, do an article on it. Okay. I'll, help. I'll uh, ask them for that. That'd be a great mm -hmm. idea. Okay. Um, we we just appreciate having the update and sure. Rich gave you a couple concerns, and I'm sure you'll take care of it. Yep. Sounds good. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Well, we're. Don't we have to make a formal motion on this roll? And especially, we're going to have to make a motion to close the road. That's true. Well, I didn't say yeah. so on here. That's why I didn't say anything. Yeah. Probably a good idea. But yeah, let's go ahead and make a motion and make it all legal and safe. <clears throat> so moved. You guys recall if there was a resolution last year that had a certain time frame on the closure? I can't remember if there was. Um, I guess it said seven it hours. It says here uh, our event date it will be this year, August 22nd, and the start time is 6.30 a.m., and the route will be closed for seven hours. And that should be our motion approving because that. Because if, if they're going to start the race at 6.30, I, I don't know, Gail, do you remember what time you guys went on? I think I went on at 3 or 4. Yeah, we also in, we had to get up at 3 o'clock to put the signs on, so maybe we do extend it to... 10 hours from 3 to, See, three to 2 or 3 to 1. Was that the, local, the locals knew that the race was starting until 6.30 and we had to get signage up in a timely manner. Right. And they knew the race wasn't running and even though the road was closed, they were still driving. And that was the difficult part of my end because I put up a fence on the south side of Foothill and go north to do some of their signs come back and somebody either drive through the fence or take it down. And it was just difficult keeping that stuff up until the race started. Sure, if we can do that, it, that'd be great if we can yeah. extend it How longer. how many hours should we say? Ten. Why, why don't we do a, uh, have a resolution for next week? I mean, there's no hurry. Okay, yeah, why can't we, why, why do you not want to do it now, Stan? Well, I mean, we could actually have the written resolution for next week. Oh, and then go from there. Well, okay. If you, would, you wouldn't have to no. come back. Okay. Good. No. I was going to say, you just, we know but, it's August 22nd. tell us 22nd. what you think for hours. Yeah, well, whatever. Three, I think we all get together at 2.30, so basically in town at 2.30. So I would say from 3 a.m. till I would say 1.30 would be the timeline. So whatever that is, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten and a half hours. Ten and a half hours. Is that enough? Uh, yeah, I think so, for sure. Um, That's still simple enough to make that sure. motion today. Especially on Foothill Avenue, that would be the first road that we will open back up. Since but if we have it as a resolution, like... Well, no, we just can sign them once we get it. You can approve it. Okay. We'll do it then next week. Okay. Okay. We'll put it down for next week. Yeah, you won't need to come. Okay. No. All right. Just plan on it. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. You bet. Yeah.
Currently, we have a liquor license to approve for eight. Yeah, Park. we got a county engineer. Oh, I'm skipped. I skipped Rich because <laughs> you'd be already talking. What do you got for us today, Rich? Not a whole lot. Um, the rock runs continuing, and um, I know that we've been out blading. Um, not a whole lot to discuss today. Um, I know that soon we'll be getting some mowers going and getting some uh, edges of the road going down. I'll be a couple weeks yet, but we got to get some employees in. Um, other than that, really not a whole lot to discuss. I'm going to be out next week and won't be available for the meeting, but I'll try to get you anything uh, updated up before then if there's something that comes up. Will you be at the shop after the meeting then, Rich? I'm here all day. Okay, I'll stop out and visit with you after the meeting. Okay. Sounds good. And just, just for your information, uh, I was able to get from Worth County to Mitchell County in about 5.3 seconds. So this whole video, this whole video meeting thing works really well on days like today. You bet. All right. Thank you, Rich. Now we'll talk about approving that license for Acorn Park Golf Course and Recreation Area. I'll, I'll make that motion to approve liquor license for Acorn, Acorn Park Golf Course and Recreation Area. Second. Okay, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And then, Stan, I believe you wanted to talk about population growth. The numbers look fantastic for Mitchell County. Yeah, I have a handout here that came from uh, the North Iowa Area Council of Governments uh, some time ago. <clears throat> what it shows is the population in 2010 for the eight-county area and then again the estimated uh, population that the U.S. Census Bureau comes up with uh, for 2015. Uh, during this period of time, uh, this is when uh, they had the floods of 2008. And at that time, uh, a lot of houses were flooded in uh, uh, Mason City, uh, uh, Rockford, uh, Waverly, uh, Cedar Falls, Waterloo, Iowa City, so on and so forth. And the government came up with a lot of money that uh, they wanted to uh, uh, have more housing built in order to uh, maintain the population. Well, they had a program uh, basically of uh, uh, half of the houses could be $150,000 or less and the other half of the houses uh, couldn't be over $180,000. And so uh, when you had city, uh, cities like uh, Mason City and Waterloo and, and uh, Cedar Falls and that, <clears throat> and the cost of a lot is $45,000, $50,000 a lot, uh, that basically did not leave a lot of money for a house, especially uh, when 150000 total, that would only leave $100,000 for a house. And so there was very little uh, uh, activity uh, in those areas. Well, then the government opened it up to uh, the whole area, uh, like uh, Mitchell County, where we didn't have any flooding, but we could apply for that money. And uh, because uh, we were creative here in Mitchell County, uh, we had uh, economic development was uh, aggressive trying to find uh, people that would qualify for the $150,000, $180,000 house. And uh, basically, uh, we had contractors, of course, uh, uh, that were uh, looking for work, that were willing to uh, build houses. And so uh, you take a look at uh, <clears throat> uh, the handout again. Clear Lake, in this period of time, lost 187 people. Uh, Mason City lost 713. You go down to Floyd County, Charles City lost 216. Hampton and Franklin County, 171. Uh, Hancock County, Britt lost 96. Uh, the one that hardly lost anything was Winnebago Buffalo Center. They only lost 10, but Forest City lost 133. 
Lake Mills lost 40. Um, there was only two counties that actually gained at any place at all. Uh, Manly did lose uh, 13 people, but uh, Northwood gained six. And uh, then we come to uh, Mitchell County, where Osage gained 35 people, Riceville gained 25 people, and St. Ansgar gained 49 people. And uh, the reason I wanted to bring this up is, uh, again, this basically these gains came at a time when we had the flood housing program. And uh, I know there's been some criticism of us uh, doing housing here in Mitchell County. Uh, those statistics aren't showing up yet. Uh, basically, we didn't start that program until uh, 2018, was it, Lowell? Correct. Yeah, so this would be the third year. And so uh, uh, the census here this fall, this coming spring, should show, again, a fairly decent increase in our population due to the programs that we have come up with. And so I wanted to point that out because there's one individual running for county supervisor that's been making quite an issue of uh, our population loss. And uh, this individual tries to use statistics from 1960 to 2020, uh, basically. And uh, yes, we had a, lo a lot of loss in uh, the 20. 20th century and even the first part of the 21st century, but we have turned it around here in Mitchell County. And so uh, this is the reason again that I wanted to bring this up and uh, uh, like I say this fall, I think we're going to be surprised how uh, uh, the additional gains that we're going to start to see uh, because of our uh, progressive activity. I, I was pleased yesterday, I talked to somebody and I'm like, oh good, you get it. Uh, he, t he talked about, he, he said, I, I, I've been trying to talk to people because I, I hear just a, just a little criticism, but he said, um, I totally get why you would be uh, encouraging this housing. Uh, it, it's not that many years before you already see that, that come back to people as far as property taxes. And, and that it actually lowers everybody's a tiny bit, you know, just the more that we can get. Uh, this was, I thought, really interesting. I mean, this was the six counties surrounding us, and we're, we're basically the only one that gained. Um, I, I just hope that we have really good, uh, with this virus, it makes me nervous. I just hope we have good census um, and that everybody answers their door and tells how many people are actually in their house and they're not afraid of to tell people that because that's just really important that we have an accurate count. I agree with you that uh, the census uh, this year may be... I'm really nervous about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, thanks for sharing that. That was interesting to see. Meetings attended. Well, I had another popular <laughs> Northeast uh, Iowa, Iowa Workforce Development meeting with state. Uh, I gave you guys each a map yes. just to show you where all the new <coughs> the new regions are, and uh, and when I say it was popular, I was being sarcastic. There were four of us that attended out of dozens from three whole regions. Only four of us attended this. It was mostly about numbers, um, which are too numerous to go into. Uh, basically, proving to me that we need a. <laughs> fiscal agent as soon as we can for this group. Uh, we talked about how much money we have for hiring people if our current ser service provider doesn't have it already earmarked. Uh, the state uses a TMI, TM1 system to show us our budget um, that we'll have to, what we'll have to work with. I, I did learn there's no cap on the amount of administrative funds that can be carried over to the next year. But in other areas, you have to spend at least 80% with a max of a 20% carryover. But the government can actually take that 20% and redistribute it. So, lots of things to think about. Service providers um, think that we want to, uh, we want to spend that 80% because of the virus, uh, but persons, um, Opinion, personal opinion was that we need to make more changes uh, to reach all of the unemployed. 
Uh, adult spending is actually only at 63%, so technically we could transfer some of that to other areas that are overspent in, such as displaced workers. So you, uh, out of mm -hmm. all the people, you only had four people got on that was a Zoom meeting? Yes, or? yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I, that was kind of discouraging. Pretty poor. The, but, but I also get it. I mean, it's, <coughs> they're talking all these numbers, and basically you have to have a fiscal agent who's dealing with that kind of stuff. We're approving and making sure they are going in the right areas, but you need somebody that knows to what they're doing. When they have a quorum. It's pretty tough to have a meeting with just four people. couldn't take any action. Yeah, well, we didn't, yeah. And, we, and basically, we didn't do any action. No. You can't. No, this was, this, was, this was with state, so it was more informing us oh. type thing. Okay. Wasn't your local one? No, it wasn't the local one. This was with, with state, right. yeah. Our local one will have a little bit. Well, sure. two of the meetings I attended, or attend, uh, one is uh, uh, housing, uh, Heartland housing thing. Uh, we have it down to, I believe, three people make a quorum out of the 20. Uh, and the other one is uh, NICOG. We uh, uh, have it less than 50%, and I don't remember the number again. I think now 11 makes a quorum because we were having a hard time. Really? Yeah. So hmm. we changed so the quorum. So I mean, Interesting. Yeah, we didn't have that the majority has to be there for a quorum. Yeah, and I think we're probably still at the majority. Just to give you a heads up, I mean, you can do that. If, mm -hmm. but I'll keep that in mind, yeah, if we have trouble that way. Uh, I think it's probably, it's just a tough one right now because we're going through so many changes because of the state changing the regions. It's just a tricky one. Uh, in a county social service HR committee meeting, and we developed an action plan for the um, COVID-19, uh, had an update on it. Um, they do get 80 hours paid leave if, if they're subject to having to be quarantined, uh, and include, but that also includes if they can't get daycare because of corona, and, um, or they're caring for someone who has it, uh, we voted to extend it and to re-evaluate it before each county social service meeting, depending on what's going on in the state. Uh, this will go before the whole board for actual final approval on this. Uh, they'll go back um, to work June 1st. This is, I'm talking about county social service people. They've been you know, doing online and whatnot or in their office. But uh, they'll go back, everybody should be back to work at June 1st. Uh, but they're only going to meet with people in the large conference room, I know here, instead of their small offices. Uh, let's see. They talked about retire, re people retiring, new hires, resignations. Um, we have uh, a, a position that needs filled um, is a children's behavioral health coordinator. And Megan is temporarily doing this, but she has too much to keep it up forever, so they'll still need somebody for that. Uh, let's see, benefit re-enrollment through March, May 25th with group benefit partners who replaced Kingston as our agent of record. This was actually an ISAC change. Uh, let's see, county social services driving policy. Um, it was recommended by ICAP uh, to have no cell phones in hand, no laptops or personal, um, uh, <laughs> they actually put in writing, no personal grooming when, when driving. Uh, that goes in effect June 1st. And uh, let's see, um, they have a county social service employee committee that they are talking about forming as a morale booster to plan some activities and help with uh, employee forms when they're having to fill them out, that type of thing. And I had a Mitchell County Board of Health meeting, uh, mostly updates uh, from public health. Um, they're probably going to be monitoring the staff in the future in the nursing homes. 
Um, they're not going to always do a press release for how many cases, but it'll be always on their website. So if you need to know that. Uh, child care, hair places, massage therapy all opened up. Um, they added child care to testing. Uh, the next round of testing might be testing for antibi antibodies. Um, three of the four confirmed cases are all fine now. And then, um, this is separate, I'm done with that meeting, but I also sent a letter to Abby Finkenauer um, against apparently the big truck legislation is there still, it still keeps getting brought up and so they just wanted to, another sent in. Um, and I happen to uh, believe that I am against the bigger trucks because I really believe it's wrecking our infrastructure, our roads are deteriorating too fast as it is. And, uh, and also, it, it's unsafe for us. So, my reading. I didn't have anything. I didn't either. So. Okay. Uh, Lowell, you want to give us the manure management updates? Mark Price, I'm sure, at 2921 350th Street, Osage. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Lowell. So noted. Well, before we go on, uh, Lowell, do you want to give us an update again next week with uh, the voting here? And uh, will the door, uh, door at the courthouse be unlocked? Uh, will the doors will be unlocked for voting. So starts at 7 a.m. People have to be here at 6. And, uh, goes to 9 p.m. And they'll come to our counter. We have our, they put up plexiglass. We've got gloves. We've got disposable pens. Well, with a pen, they can take it with them. So again, anybody listening, uh, this will be the only place that you can vote next week. Is this the is the only place, or they can vote in person. Uh, we'll be open next Saturday from 8 to 4 p.m. Doors okay. will be open on Saturday to vote. Okay, that's good to know. Cause that's we'll, this, yeah. this Saturday already. Yeah, the 30th. It's already this Saturday. <laughs> Okay, so, so, so 7, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Correct. And we will have gloves and disposable and pens. Should they wear a mask? That's optional. That's up to them. Okay. Mer and wear a mask if you bring, want. And they have to have an ID to vote. Of course, bring your ID. So people next week actually could attend our board meeting because the courthouse is open? Well, no, because uh, you, have to, you can only do 10 people. Well, but... Well, you can only have ten people. Well, if there's five of us right. here. I mean, well, we could we could see. Yeah, if, if, if today we only have five of us, yeah. So if, I mean, if, we, could, if we don't if have others on our agenda, in, we could have them. I mean, they'll have to leave or whatever. But right, sit in the hallway. We'd have we have a couple of people, but then they'd have to be distance out there. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. yeah, we could get a few. Uh, do we have any public comments? Okay, I'm going to call this meeting adjourned then. Thank you.